so much to you, Sharon. Now, the only official meeting on financial regulation today, which is the most important thing for the markets, because financials are the biggest part of the markets, is right here on Squawk on the Street. Four members of the Congressional Conference are on our special meeting list. Uh, Representative Spencer Vack is Republican, Gregory Meeks, Democrat, Jeb Henseling, Republican, and on the phone, uh, Luis Gutierrez, uh, Democrat. We're going to hash out a bill right now, gentlemen. I think we can do it. You know, Barney Frank's going to take a couple weeks. We'll, we'll, we'll do it in eight minutes. All right. Uh, I, I'm obviously kidding. But uh, let me start with you, uh, Congressman Backus. One of the reports this morning that everyone's been talking about, specifically on the political side, is that uh, House bill didn't have a vocal role of getting rid of proprietary trading. Senate bill did. And yesterday, according to Politico, um, they went in with language that was much stronger than anything in the Senate bill and completely new, not in either bill, on proprietary trading. Did that happen? Is that normal for a conference? Will that continue to happen? Well, it was done behind closed doors, and it was done uh, really without our knowledge. Uh, Republicans have not participated in these meetings, and uh, we got a 2,000-page bill. We were expecting a 1,600-page bill, and we really, Aaron, I think we're like the American people. We don't know what uh, this bill is going to end up uh, having in it or out of it, but we do know mm -hmm. that the government's going to make decisions that individuals have traditionally made. Congressman Meeks, I I'm curious, what, what really did happen, and is this, uh, is this the way it's going to go, that, that, that the two bills that we're currently looking at may have nothing in common with the actual final bill? Well, you know what, I think that we got to work at this thing. I thought, I, you know, on the House side, when we came up with the House bill, we had over 50 Republican amendments in it, so that was truly a bipartisan bill. We know that we're starting with the Senate bill as a base. And I think that the dialogue and conversation that we're going to have is going to make sure that we have a bill that uh, will be law that will be best for the American people. There's no perfect bill. Uh, and, you know, the only thing that disappoints me at times, no matter what we do, I hear some of my Republican colleagues say they won't vote for the bill. Well, there's no perfect bill. When we were in the minority, uh, there was bills that we didn't have any input into, but yet and still you saw some Democrats vote for because they thought it was the right thing to do. I hope we do the right thing for the country. The right thing for the country is to do financial regulation reform uh, that's going to benefit um, the American people. Congressman Henserling, would you vote for a bill which included a, a souped-up, strengthened uh, vocal rule outlined proprietary trading and the Blanche Lincoln language, or even stronger, uh, which would force some of the banks like Goldman Sachs to get rid of their derivatives units, which uh, I understand from people close to the company would be, uh, you know, more than 10, 15 percent of their business? Well, first, like Spencer Bach, is I actually reserve the right to read the bill. Uh, and as Spencer said, we received this 2,000-page bill, I think, literally two hours before the conference. We don't know what's in it. Uh, what we suspect well, is in it, though, is, again, a continuing bailout authority designating companies too big to fail, ensuring that we have a tarp on steroids. We also believe it's going to harm jobs through the derivatives title, making it more expensive, less desirable to use derivatives to hedge risk, create a huge new government bureaucracy to ban uh, and ration credit products, which we know will harm jobs at a time when unemployment is still hovering around double digits. So at the end of the day, we know that there is the conference and a conference. Now, Republicans may be invited to a conference that's on television cameras, but we're not invited to the conference well, that takes place this behind conference, closed though, doors. Here at this conference, what I'm hearing, and I'm, let me bring you in here, Congressman uh, Gutierrez, what I'm hearing is the same stuff, and I don't mean that negatively to any of you. I just mean these are the same arguments and conversations we've been having for, for eight months on, on this, and that, that, that is, is sort of concerning, I think, to viewers, that these are the same darn talking points. Uh, Congressman Gutierrez, should people be concerned watching that this means we're not going to get uh, a good bill? Look, we're going to have a bill. The bill will be reported out, hopefully, by the end of the month. Uh, we shouldn't expect... Uh, too much help uh, from my Republican colleagues. I think they're going to vote against any bill, as my, uh, my colleague from New York has stated. Over 50 of their amendments were adopted in the House bill, many, many amendments uh, in the Senate proposal. Um, but, of course, they're going to be negative about the bill. So what I want to do is kind of set aside the politics, because I voted uh, for the $700 billion rescue plan. Um, I am not a great proponent protector, defender of the titans of Wall Street. But when I saw um, our, our market, our, our economy put at risk, I stepped yep. forward to do what I thought was correct. And at this point, I know that tonight on CNNBC, I'm going to watch uh, the fall of Lehman Brothers, and I'm going to do everything I can to make There's sure that there isn't that kind of systematic risk ever right. incurred again.
Cong Congressman Bikes, what about this, though, uh, coming from both uh, Mr. Meeks as well as Ms. Mr. Gutierrez, this point, which a lot of the American people have bought into now, too, which is the Republicans of the party of no. And you guys are going to come in here and stonewall anything, whether it's good or whether it's bad. That hurts the Republican Party's credibility. Is it fair? Would you vote for this bill? No, we actually uh, propose we want to do something about a Lehman situation, too, and we have enhanced bankruptcy. What they do is they set up a, a potentially uh, eight or nine or ten trillion dollar bailout fund. So uh, what they want to do... Uh, because the government you, could guarantee yeah, assets yeah, of banks, hence in you're fact, saying indirectly putting taxpayers in the of the consolidated assets mm -hmm. of the largest corporations in America, uh, they want the government to be able to borrow that kind of money mm -hmm. and buy the assets of those corporations. So, so here's what I, I want to do. I want to go around the table here. I know there are details that all of you are going to disagree about, and, and strenuously so. But what people on Wall Street and, and I guess people around the country want to hear and around the world watching this interview is, is there any chance of getting agreement on a few of these key issues? So if we could go around, try to keep your answers, if you could, everyone, to a yes or a no. I know there's details, and you'll say yes, but. But I want to hear the yes or a no. And first on this Volcker rule, is there any situation, Congressman Bacchus, we'll start with you and go around, under which you would vote for some sort of a Volcker rule, which would outlaw law proprietary trading. Uh, if a large company goes to the discount window, the federal discount window, borrows from the government like mm -hmm. they do at a half a percent and then speculates with that money, yes, they shouldn't be allowed to do that. So the answer is yes in certain situations. What about you, Congressman Meeks? Yes, I could. And, and I have concerns in the other way. I would like to make sure that there's an exception, for example, made for some private equity firms so that and but they're skinning the game by those financial institutions also so that they know that they mm -hmm. are not hedging against them. But the, so the answer is absolutely yes. Congressman Hensling. Well the rules for insured depository institutions need to be different from rules for non-depository institutions. What you do with your money is your business, what you do so, with ultimately taxpayer money. So, so depository upon the institutions, yes. yes. With okay. depository institutions. All right, Congressman Gutierrez, yes or no? Uh, I, you know something? Let me give it absolutely clearly. Yes, we should stop them yeah. from using the public's money. And let, let's, not, uh, let's not try to hedge our, our, our answers on this thing. Absolutely, we should apply the Volcker rule. Well, it seems like at the least, my takeaway from this is you're going to argue about the details, but depository institutions are going to end up having this go through in some form. I mean, just from, from the four of you. Okay, the next thing is of the Blanche Lincoln derivatives language. This, uh, you know, for some banks, is just pesky to have to get rid of it. Uh, a lot of them don't know how to even split out their derivatives units. But again, as I said, uh, you know, Goldman Sachs, et cetera, could be 10, 15 percent, could be significant. Would you vote for it, yes or no? No, the government should not make a decision over whether a company can protect against inherent okay. risk of doing business. All right, and quickly, yes or no's around the board, because we do have to wrap. Uh, Mr. Meeks. I think there needs to be some tweaking to it, but yes, I can vote for it, but I think there's got to be some tweaking to the bill. Okay. Congressman Gutierrez? I, I like uh, Blanche's uh, proposal. I think it does need to be modified somewhat, but uh, okay. look, if we can't get back to Glass-Steagall, let's uh, make sure we put some barriers. Congressman Hensling, we'd all like to be back to Glass-Steagall, if, if only it meant an only 16-page piece of legislation. Finally, yes or no from you on Blanche Lincoln? Uh, no, we don't want to cost jobs. And Aaron, you need to talk about what's not in the bill, and that's dealing with the government-sponsored enterprises, the mother well, of all bailouts. That's well, what's uh, not in the bill. Completely completely right about that. It is unfortunately outside the scope of this uh, conversation, although I think many would say you're right. It should not be outside, should be. outside the scope of the legislation. Uh, thanks so much to all four of you. We really appreciate it. Scott, back to you. All right.